While we're building this house for my family for a hundred years of hopefully uh, handing down within my family, I have not been able to talk about tools much. And of course, you know, I love tools. I wrote the book Home Performance Diagnostics. I'm all about kind of testing. And of course, while I will say first that technique, how you use your tools is incredibly important. You cannot just buy nice tools or have an app for that and not know how to use them, not practice with your tools. That's all really important. But having good tools is incredibly important. And I want to show you some of my favorite tools for right now. First, let me say that I get all my tools from True Tech Tools, which is a way, like you can go on your phone and get it from Amazon. The guy who owns Amazon is about to be a trillionaire. We know this. Maybe don't put more money into his pocket. Yes, I use Amazon too. But when you're going for something that you want to have some tech support on and you want to ask questions about it, don't just use the Q&A function inside of an app or like how many stars it got. You want to actually ask those questions to somebody on the phone who works at a company that specializes in these tools. And True Tech is owned by people who actually have designed and patented instruments themselves. So they really care about this. They've been a longtime partner of ours and I get all my stuff through them. So. First, let me say that you see the getup that I'm wearing. I have uh, Atlas 46 pants. These are called the Concord pants. They have all kinds of crazy pockets all over them. They have a pocket for your cell phone right there. It's padded in a special way. Um, I can carry all kinds of stuff in these. I actually, <laughs> Grace will ask me, like, are you going to wear those pants today to the mall? And I'm like, yeah, because they just make me feel like the kind of man that I imagine myself to be. So that's, I have like, these are my nice pair. I have a pair that I use for building and you see those, those are all stained up, but these are my nice pair that I wear for diagnostics work and for just going out. Uh, I won't wear them on a date yet. I haven't gotten to that point, but I'm, I'm pushing it. And also from Atlas 46 is this vest. I've never had a vest like this. I've had, I have like the rigs that the roofers wear that have like all kinds of stuff hanging around you. They're pretty hard on your shoulders. This thing is pretty snug. I like it. It's got all kinds of room. I'm using this for diagnostics work too. So I can hang manometers and infrared cameras all over myself. Um, it's got a hook uh, that you could put, you know, wherever you want. It's got magnets in it so that I can put little things that I'm dealing with and I have everything on my person. Brilliant, because I, the amount of stuff that I've left in people's houses is frankly incredible. So I really like this. Uh, hanging around my neck is another uh, tool from True Tech Schools. This is called the Cirrus Wind Indicator. What this thing is great for is it's got an LED light built into it that's both red and white. It's, I think, for hunting, for finding out which, where your wind is coming from. But basically, it's a smoke puffer that uses not titanium tetrachloride, which is what you'd use in the kind of HERS Raider and BPI world that turns into hydrochloric acid when it hits air. Not my favorite thing, talking about chemistry on this channel. This is glycol, which is the same thing that's in salad dressing basically, but it's not the dragon puffer that some of you may be familiar with. This one actually does not get your hands all sticky and it looks professional, it doesn't look like a toy. I like it. This right here is my data logger. This is from Hobo. Um, I use this quite a lot because it's important to know how temperatures and humidities drift and what they are in the first place. I wear my Leatherman just basically every day. Now I've got a Wave uh, in my pocket here and I've got it on a kit that holds also a Sharpie and a flashlight. I, I use that stuff, like you have to really carry it to start getting used to it. You, you'll wear it the first couple days and be like, I haven't used this in two days. The f you have to kind of get used to it. So. All of this is fun and exciting, but what I really want to show you is the unboxing of my new tools that I just got from True Tech Tools, which is all my Malco sheet metal tools. If you're following this build, you know that I am installing my own ductwork on this, even though I'm not an HVAC professional. Let me first say that I have experts who are helping me all along the way, and that's important for any of you who are trying to take on something that's more than you can chew, which is my favorite thing to do. Um, so in the effort to have the duct system, which is sheet metal, rigid sheet metal, be as perfect as possible, I need to be able to work with sheet metal. I don't just buy some components that snap together and then that's it. Uh, you, you gotta really be able to get in there and do some stuff. I'm gonna have to make my own return plenum, for example. I'm gonna have to make other components and little collars and fittings and stuff like that. So all of this stuff from Malco uh, just came in from True Tech Tools today. And this is the one box that didn't fit inside of the rest of it, which is a, uh, this is a ruler, which is both a straight edge and it's also flexible. This is called Malco's semi-flexible, um, they call it a circumference rule. And the reason they call it that is because it's got like the inches marked out just like a ruler would. But right next to the inches is how many inches it will take to make 
a round duct of that, of that diameter circumference-wise. Simply take what diameter you're looking for and scoot right over and say, okay, for an 18-inch round, I'm going to need 57 inches of flat sheet metal that I bend then into a circumference that forms a circle. You can also use this to scribe weird shapes. And by the way, I had I was under some kind of a naive assumption that like I've got hammers and I've got a screw gun and it'll be fine. Um, I've got one set of shears, uh, but like it turns out that there's a lot of stuff. If you really want to have it look nice, which we're making a TV show and we have a video channel, yes, I want it to look nice. It's important that it doesn't look like a DIY project. Max 2000, the green handles and the red handles. Red is uh, generally left-handed or right-handed. We'll figure out which one's which. Obviously, I'm new to this, but they cut in different directions. Like you can see that the left side is on top of this, and on this side, the right side is on top of the other one. Generally, when you're cutting with some of these, half of what you're cutting is going to get ruined. It's going to get like bent up out of the way, and then one side of it will be perfect. That's the side that you obviously want. So when you're cutting something like a circle, you want to use the, the uh, right-handed or left-handed version that's going to allow the piece that is left to be perfectly flat and straight and not all bent to crap. These are called bulldog snips. They're a smaller version of that, and they're for like cutting an S, for example, which is three layers of something like a 26 gauge. Then you're gonna want these little guys because you need a lot more leverage to get in there. So regular old snips aside, we've got crimpers. This is a way to make what looks like crimped duct that you buy. That's important if you're going to work with circular duct at all, which I am. And by the way, what you use that for is if you have to cut, like I've got lengths that are 15 feet long. If I need it to be 14 and a half feet, then I'm going to have to cut the crimp that's on there off. And now I have an uncrimped, so now I'm trying to fit an A with an A instead of an A with a B where they're made to fit together. So you, you got to have this stuff. Uh, these are called hand seamers. And they're for just bending and flattening and making sure that all the stuff that you're working with is flat. When you get the ductwork from the supplier, even if they're a good one, some of it's going to be a little bent. These are six inch. These are three inch, but they're also on an angle, as you can see. So that's for working kind of overhead where you have a little less clearance. And now we've got things like a circular scriber. What we used in school was called a compass. Uh, compasses, I, I remember them being really flimsy and not being very good. This thing has a uh, little bolts that you crank down, and it's got these carbide scribers instead of having to whip out your Sharpie, which you carry on you all the time because you're that kind of a person. Um, you can just basically scrape the pattern that you want to cut into the metal with these scribers. So this, I believe, is called the 42-inch uh, version. It's called number 24. I don't know why they call stuff what they do. This is a square, obviously, and it's a combination square, so it's got built into it if I can get this out. This was something that I thought was really neat. This has a little scriber built into it. So if I want to trace uh, a square or like do a straight line onto a piece of ductwork, obviously this is adjustable. You got all kinds of little um, dials on this that you can adjust where it is. And then you've got your scriber again, so you don't have to whip out a Sharpie that's going to make a big fat line. You can make a really skinny little line and be as accurate as you want to be. Uh, it also has a level built into it, which I just feel like I know it's like wearing your Leatherman. You can't find a use for it the first couple days, but I, I know eventually I'm going to be like, wow, thank God this thing has a level bubble on it. This is called a tinner's hammer, and I am not, to be perfectly honest with you, completely in the know about the difference between a regular hammer and this hammer. This is square. That is a difference. It's obvious. But like how that becomes helpful, you're uh, using it on some things that you're locking, and the stuff that I used that was manufactured and then brought to me with snap locks built into it, I think didn't really require this because it was made in a factory. When I am making some of this stuff, and I'm gonna show you some tools in just a second that I'm gonna be making snap locks with, I might need this because it's not gonna be as perfect as science. And of course, this channel is all about having a conversation with you about the best way to build. So if you have used this and you found that it is, has some very special properties, please do share them with me because this is something that's like a learning process for me and I'm gonna be sharing it with you as well. Um, I'm not going to be teaching you how to do HVAC, but I do just want to share the journey of somebody who's going through this. A lot of people who are learning something for the first time feel embarrassed. I'm not embarrassed. I know that I'm an idiot sometimes and that I've got a lot to learn. And you're going to see me use all this stuff in future videos. I just wanted to, I was excited about unboxing, so I thought I would just share this stuff. This is where I want to scribe like an inch from the edge along the entire length of a duct so that I can then come along with my uh, hand seamers or with a crimper or something like that and know exactly where I need to be going to. By the way, these 
Malco makes screws, sheet metal screws, and that is what the scriber on this tool is, is a replaceable sheet metal screw, which I think is pretty cool. We have a notcher. When you're building square stuff, you're gonna need to have uh, folding edges, and you can't do that unless you have a notch cut out at each corner. So that's what this does, basically. It's fairly simple. You could do that with shears or with snips, but uh, you'd have different shaped notches all along. So again, if you want it to look perfect, which you know that I do, then that's how you do that. And then this is your snap lock punch. So this is how you manufacture in the field uh, two pieces, and you, you uh, do this indentation on them, make sure that they're actually going to lock together when you put them together so you don't have to like hold them there while you're trying to screw the uh, fasteners in. And we're not even done. Uh, we have, when you're trying to put two rectangular duct sections together and you're using like a channel lock, you'd need this to be able to bring them together. And it's got an offset on it, which I think is going to, it's good for your knuckles. Again, I haven't used any of this stuff, so I thought, I go ahead and went ahead and picked out the things that I thought would be, have the widest range of applications. A set of big shears. These are for making straight lines where the, the ones that I showed you first are for like cutting curves, cutting circles out of things. These are for cutting a long, perfectly straight line. This is basically a mini hand brake. So a brake is something that you use to fold sheet metal in big, long uh, folds. And this is a, an 18 inch version of that. So you basically have a piece of sheet metal, you fit it down into this slot, there's two slots on it, and then you can fold the whole thing at once, which is easy. I picked this size because I've got um, 14 inch wide duct uh, wall stacks that are going in and in some cases I'm gonna have to be manufacturing some of the fittings for that and so 18 inches is more than enough for that. Zip tie tensioning tool. Zip ties are the things that you get that you fit the one end into the little buckle in itself and then you pull it tight. This is a machined way to actually get it to be really perfectly tight with the right amount of tension that the manufacturer specify and then cutting that little tail off of it. And I, I, I known that these things existed, but I took this as my opportunity to go ahead and buy one because I've never actually had one. This was something that I am pretty excited about actually, because people are like, oh, it's gonna be hard for you to work as one person, which I am planning to do. These are duct holders. What do they call it? They call it like an extra pair of hands, duct holder. Yep. It's these two giant chip clip clamps that have built into them little teeth that'll grab a two by member. So when I'm working on the crawl space and I have to be like lifting something because I want it to be six inches away from the underside of the joist, I can connect these two with this chain and then just have the duct hang underneath it. And because it's got the teeth, I'm not worried about it slipping on falling off. Anything to make a two person job a one person job is, makes me much more relaxed because I always feel nervous when I have somebody else that's there that I'm like, ooh, I should be entertaining them and making sure that they have a job to do that they are enjoying. Okay, so this is all now power tool stuff because cutting stuff by hand is, is good, but when you want to be fast about it, just hook this up to a drill, drill a little hole, and then stick uh, this thing in the hole, and then you've got a drill bit that they include that goes through here, and you drill a big old hole into it. I am also excited about this. It's called Turbo Shear MD. So what this does is, like I told you in the beginning, when you're cutting with shears, one half of what you're cutting, one side of it, is going to get ruined, and one half of it is going to be perfect. This one cuts a strip out of whatever you're cutting that's about that wide, and both sides end up being perfectly usable in the next phase of whatever you're about to do. The last thing in line is an awesome backpack. It's got a padded and waterproof uh, seat on it, nice big pocket, and of course, it looks like this inside because it's for these tools. So this stuff, again, I'm gonna be learning how to use. I'm gonna show you how I'm using it as I go about doing the rest of the duct install. We have the Mitsubishi uh, ducted split uh, system down in the crawl space right now. We just put that down there yesterday. It was a three big guy job. And I've got all the other equipment down there already. So this is gonna start in earnest this week, which I'm really excited about. We'll make sure to keep you abreast of all those uh, little details and the interesting things that happen. Please do comment if you have any advice for me or if you have questions about what the purpose of some of these things are. Like and subscribe. Tune in next time. <laughs>